wheel in uh, any number of, of race cars uh, around this part of the world uh, for a good number of years and has been winning in, in almost all of them. I've got, I've got his stats just for sprint car races in, uh, in, in 2022. And um, I know he ran a lot more races probably than this. This is just sprint cars for Mads. He ran 60, 60 sprint car events. He won 10% of those, so he had six wins. 18 times he ran in the top five. 32 times he ran in the top 10. He ran at 34 tracks in 13 different states, and they hauled that car 22,000 miles. To, uh, to to run and um, and, and I am uh, happy to report that here in just uh, the last uh, couple of days, uh, Matt and Ray Marshall Motorsports have come to an agreement. They're going to run a full USAC National Sprint Car Series schedule in 2023, and uh, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be nice to see him battling it out week in and week out at, at tracks all across the country. From what I understand, he's also going to be in a, uh, a uh, Silver Crown car as well. So we're going to talk to him about that and much, much more. Please welcome, if you would, the Pride Pleasant Hill, Ohio, Mr. Matt Westfall. And it's good to see you. Are those, are those numbers close to, to right for the sprint car? Yeah, I think Steve passed pass these along. You know, that, that's pretty impressive to, to run that many races and, and to, I think I saw somewhere where, God, what was it that you, of uh, uh, something like 76 features, you, 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 you qualified for 75 of 76 features last year, something like that. Is that number close? Is that right? Yeah, we missed one show. One show. Well, what, what was it in? Hey, this well on what, what was it? Sprint car. Really? What happened? That's what I'm very good at. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty sure you were going to tell me something broke. So. Well, you are a you're a third generation racer in your family, right? So, well, at least from the standpoint of someone who's been involved in motorsports in the sport. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, I think uh, you're second generation as far as drivers go, right? Yeah, my dad raced. Granddad, though, owned cars. Yeah worked on cars yep. so give us an idea i mean you know you've been doing this for a long time winning a, a ton of races and now you get your shot at, at, at running for a usac national title was it right you're, you're, are you going to run for both championship in both the sprint car series and silver crown series yeah i'm going to run for ray with the sprint car and uh malcolm loveless in the silver crown series. so give us an idea for what preparations are like is it any different from Getting ready for these races that you ran in 2022 is the intensity level different what what are you expecting no uh last year it was uh me and my dad pretty much did all the sprint car races by ourselves so when we did like indiana sprint week it was just me and him so it makes it i mean it makes it tough and he's he's not young anymore so it makes it, it, makes it really difficult but uh no um it's pretty much we don't have an off season anymore we're right. always getting ready um there at the end of the year, we went to uh, California and Arizona, and our truck broke down in California, so that put us a couple weeks behind, so we had to fly home and then fly back, and it just put us behind on getting race cars ready to go to Florida, which we're about ready to, uh, we about have our cars ready for the sprint car uh, season. Hold on a second, Matt. Are you hearing him okay? Are, are you hearing him okay? All right, just want to, you might want to hold it up. Oh, they, they sorry. Are, they, there no, you're fine. Go. You're but no, we've, uh, we got home from the Chili Bowl there last uh, two weeks ago, and uh, we start putting our sprint car stuff together. So we leave the ninth for Florida, and that'll start our season out. Uh, you were sharing the story about uh, the incident with your hauler. Um, tell everybody what happened. Yeah, we were uh, we were just on uh, we were just west of Palm Springs, almost to Paris, and uh, we were in the middle of a bunch of traffic. And Dad was driving and. We had a trash bag fly out of a truck in front of us. A trash bag? Yeah, yeah regular this, trash bag. This very old trash bag had some foam blocks in it or something. Run over it and uh, we didn't go five miles. And I told Dad, I said, you hear something flapping? He looked at me and he goes, no, we're just driving along. <laughs> Next thing you know, the truck quits. I hop out of the truck. It ripped, it got uh, in the driveline, ripped all the fuel lines, air lines, everything out. I mean, it, 
and then we're in the state of California, so there's like a five eighths. Uh, the fuel's just running out of the fuel tank, so we hurry up, get in the trailer, get some. We sat on the road for like ten hours. Luckily, we have a lot of good friends from California that uh, got us a truck, got us to the racetrack, and had everything. It just it was a mess. <laughs> a trash bag did all that. That's, yeah, that, that's hard. Well, I'm, I'm glad you. Did, did you have to just leave the, the hauler sitting there? Uh, well, they towed us to a truck place and they they couldn't get it fixed. Then we ended up having to have it towed back to uh, Phoenix, which was a five hour drive. It oh wasn't a cheap fix, believe yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most expensive trash bag in the world. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you grew up, you always knew you were going to drive race cars. You started in car track. Yeah, actually, this year will be my 40th year race. Wow. So you were a, a, a young kid, first time you got into a car. Yeah, I think they uh, let me ride a go-kart when I was three, and I hit my dad's pickup truck, so I had to wait a couple oh. years. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we, I started racing go-karts at Willowdale. I mean, a lot of you guys probably know. That right there. We, uh, I started when I was six years old, so I've been doing it my whole life. Now, a couple of your heroes, uh, of course, uh, you grew up not that far down the road from Jack Hewitt, so you had some good tutelage there. But then Rich Vogler was also a part part of the uh, party. Rich, was it your granddad who, who worked on some cars for Rich? What was the connection there with the Westfall family? Um, my uh, uncle Doug yeah, actually uncle, that's it. actually worked for uh, the Aristocrat Products team in the '80s, and my dad helped. And I just remember when I was a kid, Rich would fly into Piqua with his airplane and go over and work on the car, and they'd run him back over. And, so it was kind of cool, and they did they did some work for uh, they built a, a sprint car for McRide and Shaw too. That it was supposed to be for Jack Hewitt, and then uh, I think Jeff Gordon ended up running it at Sandusky one night, and I went with my uncle there, and he won the first night in it. So that was pretty cool. So, what? Give me the the, the best advice, or or the the be yeah best piece of advice that Hewitt ever gave you. <laughs> the best advice you can share with, with a group of folks uh, mixed company. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess uh, to treat your fans good. I mean, to stay after the races and always be the last one there. Yeah, Jack is a is a piece of work. By the way, we need to let everybody know that Jack was involved in a deal coming back from the Chili Bowl, but he's okay, right? Yeah, I, I haven't talked to him. I, we we actually took some stuff out for him to the Chili Bowl, but. Uh, I haven't talked to him since he's been home. I just seen that there, the guy he was riding with, the van caught on fire, and all his uh, everything he had was lost in the fire. But it wasn't Jack's vehicle, right? He was, no, he not was with, with somebody else. Not that I know. Of. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he ran out somewhere. But he's okay. Everything there. Yeah, and all that other stuff can be replaced. Okay, I, I read a quote. Uh, this is, I think, a story from uh, maybe National Speed Sport News, where you told your wife. I'm always going to race, and we're always going to be broke. <laughs> well, anybody that owns a race car knows that. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, when you when you said that to her, because y'all been married for quite a while, when you said that to her, what did she say back? She just looked at me and laughed. She knew. <laughs> she knows, because that's all I've ever done, you know, so uh, we, we work hard on what we do, you know, and uh, I've had a lot of great people help me through the years, so. It just uh, she stuck by me so yeah yeah so the support system is important so okay you, you grow up you, you have your first incident in that uh, in that uh, cart and you have to sit out a couple of years to mature until you're seven uh, to, to get back in, in but give us a good idea what it was like growing up how, how your progression to, to get to where you are now uh, because we know you're good in everything you've driven I mean it didn't matter if it was modifieds or late models or you really love midgets though right um, yeah, I do, but I'm I'm too old to race them now. Oh, why do you say that? Why do you kids are crazy? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true for most race car drivers. Yeah, we were talking uh, over over the table uh, with with Chase. We want to see the the real Hut Hundred come back. We'd love to see the Hut. You ran you ran the Hut Hundred a couple of times at the Action Track, did you? When it was a regular thirty three car lineup. Yeah, we were on there. Uh, I forget what year it was. I led the whole thing so about. 20 to go and yeah. front end break but uh that was my chance of one of the big races to win you know and uh 
it just seems like that's always been the way. I've won a lot of races, but that one big one, you know, you try to get it and just some dumb. Ones. But there's something about that event, particularly at, at the action track, the big wide half mile and, and 33 cars. Do you, you think it's even possible to see that happen again? I heard so many guys talk about, and, and we were talking about this with Chase as well, about engine programs for midgets not really being up to, to, to par or too expensive to run on the half mile. From where you sit, do you think the Midget Series could ever see the type of revival where there's enough cars to run a full-blown field for a hot hundred? Um, yeah, I mean, I believe so. I mean, they, they get a lot of cars. They used to get a lot of cars in Paris for the turkey night. But um, like you said, the hot 100, when I hear the hot 100, I think of Terre Haute. Yeah. Because when I started running it, that's where we went. You know what I mean? It was uh, it's just a big event. I, I think nowadays, the racetrack might be a little big for as crazy as the kids are yeah. to get somebody hurt or something. But uh, I mean, it's just the respect factor. When I started running midgets, everybody respected each other. I don't think there's much respect anymore with these young kids. They just drive on the side of you and take you out. So You know, Matt, I hate to tell you, but that's just you getting old. <laughs> <laughs> when, you were, when you were 19 or 20, everybody thought you were crazy too. And, Probably. And, I mean, I'm serious. You know, it's a weird perspective how age changes how you see life, right? And, and you do. You think, well, when I was younger, we didn't do this crap, right? And I can tell you from the PA booth at the action track in the, in the late 80s and early 90s, man, you guys were nuts. I mean, and, and we saw some crazy stuff. That's not to say it was wrong. Guys taking a lot of chances, but I do think that age tempers a lot of that. I'm going to do anything to, to win a race, don't you well, think? Well, yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, you see now the guys that uh, last races and win races, they're more mature, you know. I mean, they just don't go balls out the first couple laps and crash themselves. So, I don't know, I guess you would say I'm getting old. Yeah. <laughs> so, give me a, a good idea once, uh, once you got to your teens. And once you realized you had a real knack for driving and, and you, you realized I might be able to make a living as a professional race car driver, how did your life change? What had to happen for you to be able to start running a lot and, and, and make the move to, to professional race car driving? Well, I mean, like I said, you gotta have a lot of good people behind you. We, uh, for me to race for a living, we couldn't do it on our own or with my parents. Uh, finances so uh through the years i mean i've just had a lot of great people uh take interest in me and help me out to get to where i needed but to be. was there a year or was there a race you know where where you got out of the car and you said i can run with anybody i i can run with anybody i can do this at that at that level it was probably that hut hunter day year when really we, yeah we had i mean tracy hines jay drake everybody was there there was a midget driver they were there and uh we had him beat, you know, and it's... Was Leffler still running then? Uh, I think he was in Cup. He was already, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, but, it's, no, I did, I raced with Jason quite a bit, really, when right. I first started. So, um, there's just a lot of great racers that I've got to race with that's taught me a lot through the years. But you got to admit, Jay Drake was crazy. Yeah, I was there that night. Yeah. <laughs> I was there the night he crashed at Terre Haute. Oh, I got it. Yeah. I agree, yeah, where he hit the pit opening. Yeah. They're going into three. Yep. Yep. Tore the car completely apart. Yep, the only thing was his body sitting in the roll cage. Yeah, the roll cage. Was the motor dead. was gone, the front end, everything. It reminded me an awful lot of that crash at Walter. Remember that crash at Michael Walter yeah. at Bristol? Yep. Yeah, it was almost the same thing. And I remember they, when, when the safety team radioed us and said that, that Jay was alive, we just all shook our heads. And I think, I think Dick, Jordan, I think Dick was right next to him because that was a USAC event. That might have even been a, I don't know if it was a Hut Hundred, but I think, I think it was a regional race because Tracy Hines won. But it was a USAC race, race, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. But that was a scary deal. But but Jay would do. Jay would run a line at the action track that was really scary. Yeah, I mean he he uh, he was really good back in his day. I mean he was he was one to beat for sure. Yeah. So you know the you look at racing now you look at racing where, where it was when you were 23 24 25 years old has the sport changed or have you changed what what's different now 25 years later given that you're in your 40s um i i think nowadays everybody has good equipment 
back when I first started, there was maybe 10 to 15 cars at the racetrack that could win. Now you go to a racetrack, there's 35 cars there, 30 of them could win. So, I mean, I just think the competition's gotten a lot better. Um, there's a lot more money and sponsorship that people can have great equipment. And I mean, it just, it makes it tougher. Every year gets tougher. You know, your time that you spent in, uh, and, and you took the, you took the modifieds really quick and, and, and you won a, a lot of races there. And then you, you, you had an opportunity, I know, to run some late models. But I remember seeing a quote from you where you said, if you don't show up with top of the line equipment, you might as well even forget you know, running in the top five or, or the top 10. What about there now? Is, is, is the disparity the same or do we have a little more parity in, in late models? Um, I there's so many great late models out there I believe um, any given night anybody can win you know I mean you you have your guys that win all the time but there's always like Ricky Thornton jr. don't win a lot but he's right up front again you know I mean he yeah. won second last night should have won probably but uh, there's just there's a lot of good teams out there that have a lot of money to back in they got good crew chiefs um, it just it makes it easy on a drive a driver it's pretty easy to drive a race car that handles good, you know? Like in our situation, we, we work on our own cars. I'm my, me and my dad are our own crew chiefs. I don't have a hired crew chief or anything, so it makes it tougher on us than it does some of the more funded teams. Do you still run some indoor stuff? You were in Chili Bowl, didn't you? Yeah, I went to did, Chili Bowl. did you run Fort Wayne? No, no, not this year. Yeah, did, do you like running indoors? Um, I like the dirt stuff. I'm not much for the concrete now. Yeah, yeah the stick em. It's like yeah. Stewart saying you watch a parade. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> local parade. So. Yeah, how, how was Chili Bowl this year? Uh, it wasn't bad. It was better for us. Uh, this year we got a different engine, so it, it helped us. Um, instead of being 25 years behind on technology on motor, we, we were a lot better this year. So we made it to the C main. That was pretty good, really. Yeah, what they have. Uh, we were we were talking. What would they have? Another three hundred cars this year. I think there was three hundred sixty. Three hundred sixty cars. God, I, I, what they start with? W mains? I don't know. God, yeah. or K or something. That's that's, that's incredible. So, um, twenty twenty three, can you guys contend for the USAC national championship first year full time? Um, I actually ran the whole deal last year, but I wasn't really planning on doing it. Okay. Um, I didn't realize you ran them all. Yeah, actually, I was the only one to run the whole extreme sprint car deal and the uh, USAC deal last year. So uh, we got kind of lucky because I was going to do the whole extreme, and we went to Peebley, and USAC had a race on Saturday night against Peebley, and it rained out, so I got to run Peebley, and then we hauled ass to uh, – Wisconsin for the on Sunday night of Sun Prairie, so that that helped out because if you if you have to if you race a race against USAC, you lose all your point money, everything at the end of the year. Oh, you're kidding! I didn't no, realize that. No, so it's uh, I guess it's in the contract where when you sign for your license or something. Oh, I don't like that clause at all. No, I kind of sucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but but can you win it this year? Does, how uh, much? How, what has to happen? I should rephrase it. What has to happen for you to win? Well, you have to have a lot of luck. We got to be on our game, and uh, I mean, it's possible. Anything's possible, you know. We don't go there to lose, so we go to win. Right. And that's why we go every week. So, hopefully, have a good year. We had a good year last year, and uh, it, yeah, the racing's up and down, so you don't know how it's going to go. Best tracks for you? Uh, probably Eldora, Waynesfield. Used to hate Gas City, but it's probably one of my best now. Um, uh, there's there's just a bunch of different racetracks. I I feel like the more since I've been out on the road, it's made me a lot better being at different racetracks all the time. So I just I mean I hope hopefully this year goes good. I'm looking forward to going to Volusia again. I've had success there in the modified. Just sprint car last year wasn't very good, but uh, we can turn that around. It seems like in series across the board. Every year, drivers get younger and younger and younger. Does that bother you, or do you like seeing that? I mean, does it scare you when you see a kid who is uh, who's starting alongside of you, who may only have a half dozen races under his belt, and you wonder what he's going to do, uh, setting up for one or for three? I mean, what what's the mindset of a of a seasoned veteran? Uh, I mean, if there's if they're uh, starting up front. 
they're good enough to be there you know what i mean so it's not like it's a it's a big deal i mean they've, they've got the experience to be there so it just some of the, some guys you got to watch that you race with but um other than that i mean it's it's not it's not bad yeah so you know where you are right now and you, you, you you've already talked about you know how much your father means to to your operation you know there's going to come a time obviously when dad's not going to be able to do quite as much but what happens then what uh, do, do you have to hire somebody do you what, what does your racing schedule change uh do you take on more of the responsibilities you can only do so much one guy can only do so much but seeing that that's been you know you guys have been a team for so long do you, do you think about that or do you just put that in the back of your mind and think well we'll deal with that when we get to it well uh i mean we always need help you know but it's it's hard to find somebody that can take off work and go as much as we do um luckily dad now we're getting to go race because he's retired so now we can go race as much as we want and luckily we got the car under that lets us go do it you know it's uh it would make it tough if, if i didn't have a ride i mean we couldn't go do what we're doing now because we wouldn't have the money coming in you know right. to do what we need to do so um eventually i mean we're gonna have to get somebody to help you know uh eventually but heck who knows how much longer i'm gonna race either yeah yeah so I, yeah, like i said just put it in the back of your mind when it happens it happens you're a fabricator right yeah i have my own fab shop yeah what what's that like what's uh you, you build a lot of you build a lot of of, of uh, racing parts or do you do other fabrication jobs um i used to i used to just work on race car stuff i'd build ladders and uh, drag links. I built my own go kart stuff that we've raced for years. Um, I like doing that in the winter. Get some young kid to go and race and just go have fun. You know, get back a little bit. Um, but now I, I I just do a lot of job work. We've been doing a lot of handrails and just stuff. But I had, I ended up starting my own business because it's hard to get or have a job and go work or go race as much as we do so now i kind of schedule my own schedule being your own boss helps a little bit yeah huh? yeah. yeah he can be an ass sometimes <laughs> <laughs> so so this part of the world you know it's it's funny um uh having both you and chase uh on, on the same program there's there's something about this part of the country that, that, that just over the decades has produced great drivers what what is it about this part of the Midwest and, and this part of Ohio and Indiana that just seems to create unbelievably competitive drivers that can win a lot of races? Well, I mean, there's a lot of racetracks where there used to be. I mean, there's not as many nowadays, but uh, like when I grew up racing, I, I ran Willowdale. If you could win at Willowdale, you could win anywhere. Uh, Kyle Sauter, you probably heard of Kyle oh, Sauter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I grew up racing with him. Kevin Biesecker, there's a bunch of bunch of good talent that work. Kevin went on to work on race cars now, but um, they're just, and then we, we'd show up in Indiana with our go-karts to run, and they're tough over there too, you yeah. know what I mean? So it wasn't like uh, everybody's out there to win, you know, and it's just tough. It's just funny because I think, you know, kind of, over the years, over the last 25, 30 years, if you put a pin kind of right in on the state line and, and you drew like a hundred mile radius around that, it's incredible the, the talent, and I mean legendary talent, that falls in that circle. And, well, and I don't, I just, I can't explain, you know, not being from the Midwest, I mean, I've been here now for 35, 36 years, so, you know, I, I think of myself as a Midwesterner, but it's hard to understand what it is that makes a region so good well when you when you race against good guys it makes you better it just uh everybody just gets better 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 you know what i mean so the talent level is going to be there because we're, we're uh, striving to be better than the next guy so it's just it's and there's a lot of a lot of young kids nowadays that they stand on the gas and they're good, you know, so it's just going to keep getting tougher and tougher. Who's uh, who's the best driver you've ever run against? Probably Kyle Larson. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> best race you've ever run, not counting the, the 100 that you, you broke with 20 to go. Best, best, your best race win of your career came where and when? Uh, in 06, I won uh, the Buckeye 
uh, I forget what it's called, the Buckeye Nationals at Eldora. That was my only USAC win, so that's pretty cool. If you if you had to have one that you could redo, one race that you could <laughs> run over, would, would it be that HUD hundred, or what? Which one would it be? It would definitely be the HUD hundred. No, Port Royal. What's that? Port Royal. <laughs> yeah. uh, Port Royal is here. Uh, see you beat me on the last lap. That kind of yeah, so yeah. Ground, was that uh, the one where you where you lost the hub, the wheel cover? Yeah, that was his car. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it wound up in the line, and cause yeah. you, you were. You were three or four seconds out in front of him at that point. Yeah, we had a pretty big lead, but oh well. Race is racing. That's right. Yeah. You can't dwell on it. He's going to go the next. Schedule starts when? When do uh, when you hit the road with USAC? Uh, we're, we're leaving the 9th of February. We're going to uh, Volusia on the 13th and 14th, and then to Bubba's. Then we come home and uh, got a week off, and I'm, I'm flying out to uh, Arizona. I'm going to run a couple CRA races for a team out there, and then come back, and we're, we get started. Well, Matt, you know, the, uh, you, you look at your career, and I know you've you won a, a, a ton of races. It'd be great to have you back next year talking about a USAC National Championship. That would that would be pretty darn cool. Yeah, that would be real cool. Yeah, so we wish you the best of luck. Congratulations on the, the deal for 2023. Hope you win a, uh, a Silver Crown race or two as well. That would uh, that'd be fun to talk about. But uh, you've been running good for a long time, and I've been uh, fortunate enough to call – a uh, couple of races where you were on the track uh, there in Terre Haute, and I, uh, I sure do appreciate you being here tonight. And thanks so much for stopping by. Yep. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, gentlemen. Matt Westfall. Okay.